Hi everyone, welcome to The Hive Carpenter. Uh, on behalf of The Hive, I am so excited to host yet another session of the Entrepreneur Experiences. Today we're have, we have a special guest, his name is Dean Brechneider. Uh, but before I introduce him, <laughs> I'd like to do a little shameless plug <laughs> about The Hive for those who are tuning in for the first time. Uh, the Hive is a network of co-working spaces for growth-minded companies, uh, and we have a location all across Asia, from Japan, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Bangkok, and Singapore. So if you'd like to learn more about The Hive, like how to become a member, or even join some of our amazing events, please look for me after the show, uh, or you can even email us at contact at thehive.sg. Um, so if I haven't introduced myself, my name is Satish, uh, and without further ado, let's uh, put our hands together to welcome Mr. Dean Brettschneider. Thank you. So, hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming down today. Uh, for those who don't know you, if you don't mind giving a little background about um, you know, your experiences in the food and beverage industry. I mean, pretty big name, especially with um, being an owner of Baker & Cook. Yeah. Uh, well, certainly um, Dean, uh, and a uh, little bit interesting about my surname, of course, um, many people think I'm German. Um, but I'm actually a New Zealander, um, so I want to put that out uh, first, uh, a Kiwi. Um, so look, I'm, I'm the founder of Baker & Cook, uh, Plank Sardo Pizza, Brick Schneider's Baking & Cooking School, um, and Mo and & Joe's Sardo Burgers. So somewhat a cluster, if you like, of food and beverage, um, as well as have my own life, which is a, a global baker. So yeah, so let's say everything about baking. Everything about baking. Okay. So, I mean, I did a lot of reading uh, beforehand, and um, your experiences are quite vast. Um, but my main question, or the one that I'm most curious about, is how did you come to Singapore? <laughs> yeah, interesting. I mean, you know, being a baker, I mean, uh, I, what is it now? Actually, tomorrow, actually, tomorrow is our eight year celebration. Eight year anniversary? In, in, yeah, eight year anniversary. Uh, in Singapore. So, look, I've been to Singapore prior to, eight years ago, I've been to Singapore once. And I've been to Changi Airport, like a lot of people. And, and I think I had seven hours layover, and I came into the city and, and on a bus and, and came out back to the airport. So I didn't really know anything about Singapore at all. Um, however, I, I was backwards, of course, because I live in Copenhagen, uh, consulting a lot in those days, so let's say 10 years ago in, in London. Um, backwards of course to New Zealand because I'm a New Zealander and my son was in New Zealand and I do lots of things in New Zealand. And one of my friends said to me, hey Dean, um, haven't seen you for a year. I used to live in a, in a compound with him in Shanghai. Um, come for a bike ride in Singapore. And I'm like, okay, I don't know much about Singapore at all. So I bought my bike, literally, uh, in my bag. Uh, came to his house, went for a bike ride around the island, uh, I don't know, 100 kilometers or something like that. And after the bike ride, uh, it might have been ooh, 8.30 or something, I just said, so where can we get a good copy and maybe something like an Eggs Benedict or a croissant or something like that? And, and, and he just kind of looked at me, and this was out in Bukatima, um, and he just looked at me and said, oh, there's Starbucks or there's coffee bean and tea leaf. And that was it. And I went, oh, wow, okay. Carried on, took me around Dempsey, you know, did me a little tour of uh, Singapore in, in a few hours. Then we had pizza in a place called Greenwood. And Greenwood is in Bukatima, uh, Hillcrest Road. And after the, you know, you know, it's one of those stories that says, after a few beers, pizza and beers, you know, you get a little bit, um, you get a little bit excited, you get a little bit enthusiastic, you get a little bit passionate, and of course. After you've had a couple of drinks, you just get a, anything's possible. So I said to him, why don't we open a bakery in this area? And I knew nothing about Fukatima. I mean, it took me a long time to even work out how to spell Fukatima. And so uh, I said, let's open a bakery up in this neighborhood. And so he rang me up, literally. So I went off to New Zealand. And he rang me up three months later and he said, you know that corner that we saw in Hillcrest Road? It's available. But the landlord, like actually the, the existing tenant, wants me to pay $30,000 to take over the lease. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. He said, what should I do? And, I, and this is a friend of mine, right? he's in shipping. And I said, uh, 
pay the guy 30 grand and let's open a bakery. So eight years ago, $30,000 to a guy that I didn't even know, and a corner that I vaguely remember, in a neighborhood that I've never been in, in Singapore I've been once, we opened our first bakery eight years ago, and now we have 10 bakeries in Singapore, we have uh, five pizzerias in Singapore, we have a school in Singapore, uh, we have a burger joint, and we have places in Saudi Arabia, and Manila, and soon Kuala Lumpur, out of that one shop in Hillcrest Road. I'm, I'm guessing it, it, I mean, it's dear to your heart still, till this day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Greenwood is kind of funny, um, way back then, and I think this is part of being um, young, I'm not young anymore, but let's say eight years ago I was young, um, and we, because we, it's called Greenwood, so we just laughed and we said, why don't we just call it Deanwood? And in Greenwood, we now have a uh, head office, so I still maintain my focus to have my head office in the suburban neighbourhood. I have my bakeries there, I have a burger joint there, and I have a school there. So literally we've got four establishments within 100 metres of each other that are all related to Baker and Cook, and, and, and I guess Deanwood is starting to become true in, in the neighbourhood. So it, it's still my favourite flagship store. It's the oldest, but it's my favourite. And your second favourite? Second favourite store, um, you know, we've just opened a store in Dempsey, uh, not in the cluster of Dempsey Hill, slightly out on Lowen Road. Um, that's kind of my second favourite, I think, because it's, it's Bacon Cook 2.0. Uh, we're in the middle of the jungle. We, we had to think differently when we uh, designed the place. We had to think of the menu differently. Um, and you know what? It's probably cemented one thing that I said to many people years ago. Bakeries are about communities and are about neighbourhoods. And so Dempsey to me really, when if you, uh, I don't know if anyone's been there at Dempsey on a Saturday or a Sunday, it's chaos. It's chaos because there's lots of families there and there's lots of people really enjoying spending just a, a nice time within the bacon cook, you know, a, a perimeter if you like. Um, and so I just go there and, and, and I just kind of, I feel, I feel content. Not because it's the newest store, nothing to do with that. Uh, not because it's got the highest turnover, because I just look at the people there having fun, and I look at the people there enjoying themselves, and, and to me that's part of the reason why I set up Bacon Really interesting story. <laughs> I mean, being part of a co-working space especially, we're faced with a lot of startups, a lot of growth companies, um, a lot of entrepreneurs themselves, and you know, lots of conversations with them, and you realize that the thing that's stopping them from fully experiencing like the, I guess, the capacity of their business is that fear of, you know, taking the next leap. And I mean, just even when you just said it just now, 30 grand, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, for those who, I guess, have that fear of, you know, or at least not that much capital, like, what kind of advice would you give them to say, hey, you know what, just take that risk? Because, I mean, clearly it's doing wonders for you, and mm -hmm. it's an amazing brand. I mean, you're the global baker, so. Yeah. I, look, I think, yeah, it's a tough one because often people look at businesses like Baker and Cook and many other very successful businesses, and they look at them, and they they, they and you start looking at the the brand value, you start looking at the assets that they might have and, and what it costs to to produce what you've created, and of course it's a lot of money over a lot of years. There's an immense amount of money that we've reinvested in the business, no debt in the business, and. The really interesting thing, I think, is that when you're an entrepreneur and a young entrepreneur, you try not to look at all these amazing places that are, that are 10 years old, 5 years old, or 20 years old, because they started with nothing sometime, somewhere. At some point in time, they started with nothing, right? And so I think as an entrepreneur, you, you just don't be scared of starting with nothing, because you can't be a bacon cook tomorrow. Yeah. And if you want to be a bacon cook tomorrow, then you've got to find you know ten million dollars, right? It's much easier to find two hundred thousand dollars and risk two hundred thousand dollars, and maybe in five years' time you you've got ten million dollars in terms of turnover or or, or so a profit. It doesn't matter. But I think too many people get scared. They want to be 
now where a lot of businesses have taken 10 years to get to. Um, but man, just start off with $200,000, $100,000. No one wants to lose any money, don't get me wrong, but just start, just start, because you don't know where that $100,000 is going to take you. And I can tell you now, Bacon Cook's reasonably successful, never any debt in eight years, no debt, um, returned a huge amount in dividends, reinvested a lot of money last year alone, $2 million reinvested into the business. Um, and you know it all started with, with three guys putting $150,000 in the middle of the table. And none of us wanted to lose $150,000, absolutely not. And two of them are not even bakers, they were shipping guys, and they just thought it was a good idea. Um, but that's how you start. So you've got to take a risk, but don't, don't think that you're going to be a baker and cook tomorrow or, or a Facebook tomorrow. They all started with, with, with almost nothing. That's the secret. Is give it a go. I mean, you said your partners were from the shipping industry. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, very far off from brick. <laughs> um, I mean, I can see the passion that exudes from you right now, but what did it take to convince them to, I guess, invest in a business that is so far off from what they know so much about? Well, first of all, they didn't invest in me. As, as There was no discussion about, um, first of all, it was some beer and pizza that convinced them. <laughs> um, but there was not, actually, I didn't need to convince them. They, they just went, we, we want to get involved with it. We want to do that. And there was no business plan. I, I'd hate to start up Baker Cook today. I, I think that would be the scariest thing because then if you're trying to convince me to give you money, I'm going to make you work really hard for that money. So that was the, the, the obstacle. We, I didn't have that obstacle. They just, we were friends. So that's one thing. We were just good friends. We had a, a, a they trusted me with their money. And I think that's an important thing. You know, whenever you invest in someone, you don't just want to invest in someone because they've got a good idea. You want to invest in them because of who they are. So when we decided to put the money in the middle of the table, we just, we, I knew that I could rely on them for something. But clearly they're not bakers, so I didn't need them to be a baker. But I tell you what, when I needed uh, more butter, because we were running out of butter, because we were, we were doing so well, they got in the car and got butter for me. But when they needed, we were so busy in the, in the bakery and the tables needed clearing, they cleaned the tables. So there's, it's not about what am I going to do for the money, you just do it because there's some like-minded thinking. And I think that, again, that's just down to being, uh, having a bit of trust in the people that you work with. I mean, like you just said, um, starting out your business in this time compared to before would be a completely different ball game. Um, what are the lessons that you learned that you think that would benefit you right now if you wanted to start it right now? Or? Yeah, I mean, look, it's quite interesting because now that we're successful, we get opportunities come across with our, our, um, our door in terms of businesses wanting to grow and they might need investment. Uh, or we see opportunities in that business, so we might approach them and see if they need uh, investment um, to grow. Um, so, I think there's a lot of uh, learnings along the way, um, particularly today. Today is much harder. I mean, I, look, I didn't, we didn't have an Instagram account and, and Facebook account when we started. Um, and that was only sort of eight years ago and they were available, but it wasn't what it is today. Um, so we didn't start off with that, but it's much harder to start off now. It's much harder to start off now. Food and beverage has got to be one of the most hardest businesses to make money. So for all the people that think that, that we're in the business and you, wow, how busy it looks. And you know, I always say to my staff, I can make a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, hundred thousand dollars, one million dollars, it doesn't matter. It's what's at the bottom. So I think you've got to have a business mind. You've got to have, and a business mind is like, people think that you need to go to university to have a business mind. You don't need to go to university to have a business mind. You just have to have an understanding of, of costs. And you know, it's like when you go shopping, right? When you go shopping to the supermarket, you, you, know, you've got, you want to spend some money on some stuff, and you buy some stuff, and then you've got some change. Right? That's as simple as business is. And, and I think a lot of people get 
too complicated and spreadsheets and important to the business now. I can tell you now, very important to the business because that's how we make money. Um, but along the way, you, you shouldn't, you've got to be focused on what you're trying to sell, what it costs and what your profits are. But this will come, but you've got to be focused on the cost in between. Too many people start up a business today and they think, it's almost like they ask their friends and their mother, what, you know, I've got this good idea and of course your mother is just going to say, yes, my dear, that's amazing. And, and your cake, it tastes amazing and oh, that loaf of bread, it tastes amazing. Because that's your mother's job. And some of your friends are like that as well. Your friends will tell you how amazing it looks, you know, and how amazing you look. And, and, you know, and you might not have the right dress on today with the right shoes on today, they'll still tell you you look amazing. So you, you almost have to be quite focused on, on, on knowing what you want, right? And, and um, knowing how to deliver a basic cost model, right? What it cost you, uh, or your sales, what it cost you, and then your profit. Um, I think another thing that, that is all entrepreneurs is hard work. I mean, there's no, I don't know what business that isn't hard work, you know, whether you're in the garage with your computer, uh, starting at Microsoft, or whether you're in a 7-Eleven dairy, uh, what's sorry, dairy, uh, what do you call it, convenience store. If you're in a convenience store, it's still hard work. In a bakery, in food, it's still hard work. Tech company, everything's hard work. So I think, you know, one of the biggest lessons uh, that my partners learned is it's relentless. Being an entrepreneur, being your own boss, starting up, is just being relentless. And, and you're going to get things wrong. I can tell you what, we've got lots of things wrong. And we've wasted money. Right? Uh, and I just, whenever you waste money, just make sure you have a reason why you've wasted the money. Right? So we, I call it research and development. Um, because we can get it right. So, but you've got to have that money. Um, man, but there's so many, I, I don't even know I could say what are the most, you know, the biggest learning curves. There's, everything in business is a learning curve. You know, there's no one book that will tell you how to do business. There's so many different things. There's the situation that we're dealt with now, which is the, the, uh, the virus. You know, we're, even in my business, I'm, we're sitting there thinking, well, how's it going to affect us? How's it going to affect my employees? How's it, what's my contingency plan? You know, if I don't make as much money, how am I going to keep my people employed? That just gets thrown at you overnight. But you've got to deal with it. So many things. I mean, as, I guess, the founder of all of us, <laughs> how do you stay focused while still teaching everyone, I wouldn't say under you, but everyone working for you, <laughs> um, the same goals that you have. I mean, it must get lost somewhere in translation, right? Yeah, and I think that, again, is every, uh, the reality is, is what made you successful often isn't what you're doing now. Like, for me, I'm, am I baking now? Do I bake daily? No. Nope. Uh, when was the last time I baked commercially? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Um, so you have to inspire people. You have to ins inspire people isn't always about doing the job. Inspiring people is about uh, sometimes just taking time to see how they are. Um, coming up with ideas that uh, are just, and sometimes not every idea works, but constantly coming up with new ideas. It's really important to come up with new ideas. It's really important to to give responsibility to your staff. And I'm only learning that. I mean, after eight years, I finally don't have to go into the bakery and do stuff. But it's taken a long time. So trusting people, uh, inspiring people, um, it's, it's hard work. That's a job in itself. You know, now that I've got 100 odd staff, I have to keep them motivated. I have to, so that's a hard job for me. Because normally I've just done it myself. And that's really difficult, is trying to keep people motivated and living your passion. Um, thankfully, I've got thousands of customers every day that come through the shop that help my staff stay motivated because they're buying the product, or the coffee, or the loaf of bread, it doesn't matter, or the experience, that they've had a great experience, 
And thankfully, my staff get inspired by the customers because my staff, in some cases, are making some great product. So it's, uh, but my job is to try and keep them motivated. I mean, we were having a chat earlier, and um, we were talking about your cookbooks mm. Um, mm. and how you have a, I mean, I would say a new book uh, that came out last year that, I guess, covers aspects that, I would say, you wouldn't have talked about previously. I mean, you're not just a baker. Your businessman, and I think that gets lost sometimes with some people, um, especially as being a founder of so many companies or like a brand. I think that I think a book like this is pretty inspirational, yeah. yes, and gives I guess the people a little more insight to you being more than just one person. Yeah, and, and that just goes to to you know you can be. Uh, and, and there's great examples around the world. I mean, take Richard Branson. I mean, he he is he wasn't a pilot. Um, he 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 was actually a, stu a student that had a good idea and and wrote a newspaper and and, and, and stuff like that. You know, and music and and so forth. Um, and that just leads him into other areas. So, you know, for me, writing books um, it's just part of who the business is and it's part of marketing. But I can tell you why. It costs, forget the money, it costs time. So you have to be focused on doing your job and then doing five other jobs on top of your job. So if you think that baking is your job, then imagine trying to write a book, imagine trying to do TV, imagine trying to run a business, imagine trying to understand a PL, and then at the same time serve a customer and at the same time deal with the government. Right? So there's so many things that go on in. in you know, writing a book, I mean, man, that's, that's, it, it's tough. Where do you find the time, though? <laughs> find the time? I used to write books on planes. Okay. Right? Before there was really good movies on planes, I used to write books. <laughs> because there was nothing to do for 12 hours or 10 hours on a plane and uh, 8 hours on a plane. Um, now I just watch movies and, and enjoy my relaxing time. But you find a book, the reason why you write things like books, and whether it's a baking book or a, a, my, my autobiography, it's for the benefit of other people. Because I can tell you now, it's a huge investment just for yourself. And no one, apart from your mother, will buy those books. Right? <laughs> so when you are writing a book for, for anybody, and book writing's tough, you, you are writing it for literally other people because you're just not writing it for yourself. You can't write it for yourself. Otherwise, you're the owner of 5,000 books. Expensive. I mean, I'd love to pick your brain a little bit more, uh, but we're going to take a break. Um, just a short 10 to 15 minute break uh, during that time. Please feel free to pass me questions that you'd like to ask Dean um, that I'll read out later. Um, and also, please check out his books. Uh, they're at the back um, and they're aptly titled Passion is My Main Ingredient. So, um, if you'd like to purchase a copy, just look for either me or Dean. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful woman at the back. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, just gonna take a short break and yes, enjoy, enjoy yourself. Please order some drinks if you'd like. <laughs>